Let me invite our beloved uh, brother, Reverend Simeon Olatunji, for the word of God. May God bless you. Let's jam our hands together. Let's give Jesus a big clap of praise. Thank you, my brother. May God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 I, I thought the response is not from the human. What is that? Yes. So when you shout it, I tell him that was the way they shouted it in jail. If they shouted in Jericho and the walls kept rushing down, I'm sure it's not hallelujah. We, we, we were not sure whether it was hallelujah they shouted. The Bible did not clearly indicate. But if there's anything to shout in the court at all, I think it is hallelujah. hallelujah. So now when the Bible said they should shout, and they shouted and the walls kept crashing down, we don't know. Simplicity of one yeah. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
celebrating. God, God bless you. Please be seated. Be seated. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Now, I want you to go very quickly with me to yeah, Pastor, if you can do me soft note, I will be very glad. Thank you. Uh, the book of John, chapter number 4, and verse 35. John, chapter number 4, and verse 35. If you are there, say amen. amen. God bless you, church. The word of God reads, Do you not say, there are yet four months and the harvest comes. But I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the field that they are already white for harvest. Do you not say that there are four months and the harvest comes. But I say unto you, Behold, lift up your eyes and look at the field, for they are white already for harvest. Some translation says they are already white for harvest. Now, people of God, it is unfortunate that the church of our Lord Jesus has not been very, very sensitive. Mm. Tell me. The church for whom Jesus paid fatally for mm. with his blood. The church for whom Jesus crowned yeah. for for, his, for the sake of eternal life. The church for whom Jesus laid down his very precious soul. It's very, it's very, very precious life. It's not very sensitive. Here, those whom Jesus was addressing here were not strangers, they were not far away, they were not aliens, they were his disciples. They did not even understand the kind of food that Jesus had eaten. So they came to him and they were asking him, Master, have you eaten something you look said? And Jesus said, Do you not have the proverb? Do you not have a food? He said, Do you not have the saying that it is yet four months and the harvest will come? In other words, at the time that Jesus was addressing the disciples, at the time they were talking to him that day, it was not yet harvest. In the understanding of man, in the calculation of geographers, or astronomers, or those who interpret the weather and the signs of God, it was not yet harvest. But Jesus said, lift up your eyes, open your eyes, behold, the fields are wide unto harvest. The church of our Lord Jesus has been so blind to the harvest of souls around us. We have been carried away by organizing rather than agonizing. Wow. We have been so moved by programs, by construction, by edifices, by building projects. And sometimes we say discipleship. So carried away. We say four months and then harvest come. People of God, the harvest is here. And it is only the spiritually sensitive that can see it. It was like they were standing in the midst of harvest. If you read that scripture very well, it's like Jesus Christ was pointing his hands. He said, Lift up your head. Behold. See the field, they are already wild for harvest. The field of America is wild for harvest. The field of Australia is wild for harvest. The field of Africa is wild for harvest. Open your eyes, George. It is not time for us 
to fight like chickens. Right. Yeah. Wow. Now, if you see, if you see a servant of God, you see, you see, they fight themselves like chickens. That's what we do well. If there is anything that church of our Lord Jesus did, church, God, this pains me to the world. Jesus was not a joker. When he laid his life down for the church, he was not planting a fighting church. He was not planting. Jesus did not lay down his life and died and suffered grief of death and agony of the cross and was humiliated and buried so that we can pursue the lesser things of earth that we call great things. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. When God called me, I was on my way to becoming one of the best civil engineers in the world with a first class degree. And God asked me to give up my small ambition. Those things that you call great, they are lesser things of power. Yes, sure. That's right. sure. We pursue building, we pursue edifices, right. we pursue cars, limousines, all great things that we think they are alluring to us, but they are lesser things of life. Oh, yes. God is calling the church to open our eyes to the greater things of God. God is calling the church to open your mind to the agenda of heaven. God is calling the church to lift up your head. See better things. The fields are white unto harvest. The field of Africa are white. The field of America is white. The field of Asia is white. The field of America, of North America, of South America, of Australia, of Europe, of every continent of the world, they are white unto harvest. But the church has been so blind. If you are not blind, you will not go and invest your money in a business that tomorrow will soon liquidate. Oh, wait a If we ask you to give us a thousand dollars each today, some of you will start calculating because of a business you want to do tomorrow. You are not even sure whether the next day you start that business, Donald Trump is going to place a pan on that business. And all your life savings and investments will have gone down the drain. But there is an investment to eternal dividends and unending reward. The fields are wild for harvest. The field of this world is wild for harvest. The souls of men are precious to God. The Bible says precious is well sold before the Lord. But we are being so blind. We pursue things that do not hold value. We pursue glories that will not last. Hey. Ladies are looking so beautiful and adorable here tonight. But the powder on their faces, when they dance too much, is going to wash it. The glory of powder does not last. All the cosmetics, their glory, do not last. But there is a glory that cannot end. That is pursuing the agenda of God in the world. The Lord says to his disciples to open their eyes. God is talking to the church to open his eyes. Church of Jesus, open your eyes. Give them the gospel. The fields are white. Give them the love of Jesus. And today we are going to be challenging you to support the harvest of the white field. Because we cannot do it alone. This woman cannot do it alone. That's why we are here. But if you cannot open your eyes, you will see the lesser things. And they will look Magnified. Thank you. Yeah. My wife is always after me. <laughs> I don't blame her. Hallelujah. Church, hear me. I am done with my 
my assignment. But if you will not open your eyes, God is able to raise hell yes. from another accord. Oh, yes. Jesus said to those who ask men to shut up, He said, why do you forbid them? God is able to raise stones. I would rather be used here today than allow God to raise stones. Bow your heart and let us pray. The fields are white for harvest. The fields are white. Very white for harvest. And the number of them that perceive the intent and the desire of God in this generation, God is able, God is willing, God wants to use you. God is dependent upon you. And I want you to ask him to help you. Now, you are not considering the money. You are not considering the bills. You are considering the kingdom of God. You are considering the purpose of God on the earth. You are pursuing the reason Jesus died. And you are opening your eyes to the harvest. Oh, Father, we thank you. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Before I put down the microphone, open your eyes, everybody look at me. One time I was preaching for a friend in England. And one of his daughter, one of his daughter in the Lord came to me and said, Pastor came to us, came to us, and said, Pastor, I have a testimony. He said, you know. Two Sundays ago, when you were asking us to make a pledge before the Lord and do something huge to the Lord, he said, I made a pledge of 200 pounds and I redeemed it immediately. And she said, You know what? God used that pledge to save me from embarrassment and reproach and shame. And we were so excited about it and said, Wow! And she said that the uncle of the auntie of the sister of the nephew of the cousin of the and she was dressing all kinds of extended, extended family died suddenly and they were depending on her alone you know, and she needed to send 16,000 pounds home. I said, God is so good to her. I said, God is not good to you. God is punishing you. <laughs> I said, man of God, let us perceive the right testimony before the Lord here. Sister, God is not good to you. God is actually punishing you. You have 16,000 in your back. And the church is begging for offering. You get $200 and you send 16,000 for funeral. I said, you will soon send another one if you don't repent. <laughs> but I say, people of God, I beg you, don't reserve your money for funeral. Give it to the Lord. And God can stop every funeral in your life. God can stop all the emergencies in your life. God can stop all the medical bills. God can stop every embarrassing situation. God can do it. Continue to increase him. Oh, he will not do that. His ministry, God, will continue to bless. The word of God, the name of God, the power of God will continue to bless him. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray.